Welcome back everyone. This is Tommy and I have another vlog today, but today I'm going to add uh, a POV perspective. My solo shot's acting up and I thought I'd try my luck with the GoPro. Unfortunately, the waves are six inches tall, but it might be a good time to kind of uh, illustrate how I like to surf on small days. Um, definitely like to have a super groveler and I'm, right here I'm going to slow things up a bit just to kind of show you what I'm thinking. And as I look down the line, I'm trying to identify bowls or where I think steep sections are going to occur as I hit the sandbars. And so I see kind of three and they're in a row and the last one looks like it's going to close out. So I do a down pump and you always want to coordinate your steep sections with that down pump. And that last one, the third one, I was able to get enough down pump and speed to do like a little foam, foam climb. And so the rest of it, uh, it's kind of the same thing, just groveling for speed is all I'm doing. And this is where the twice baked and super grovelers uh, come in handy. You got the width, you got the volume, uh, and you definitely want as much drive and fin as possible. So I'm running quads right here. And I was fortunate, I got a, I think that thing was like a three inch wave and I got a 360 right on the shore and onto the sand. Now this is the next day, it was a foggy morning so I got up kind of late and luckily the wind hadn't come up yet but it was still super soft. Uh, so soft that I pretty much spent the entire day just tic-tacking. Uh, it was painful, but still fun. I'm not gonna complain, it's better than not surfing. So again, um, it's hard to tell how big it is from a GoPro perspective. And it, the funny thing is, is Gro GoPros have a tendency to take 30 foot waves and turn them into three foot waves. And uh, also, take a six inch wave and make it look like a one foot day and it's definitely not so anyways I don't know if you could tell how small it is but it's pretty small uh, I was hoping to see a shark or something in my footage but it didn't happen um, and so now another example is I'm gonna freeze it here and I just wanted to show you where I see it kind of cresting and the possibility of two bowls so as I turn this back on here I'll use that first one to get the down pump and the second to get kind of a little off the lip. So, especially in small days, you really have to look ahead and you kind of have to plan it out. If you don't see anything, that's a clear sign you should be doing a cutback. So down here, I'm looking way down the line and I see it breaking, decided to do a 360 and I mess it up. Um, I didn't know I wasn't gonna make the section, which is why. Uh, here, again, looking down, you could kind of see it cresting up ahead, but not enough. But I know that the end section is coming because this whole thing is going to close out. So if you have the, the ability to make that flat section, you just kind of race it down and just try to get to that end section. And I believe here, um, this one here, I see my friend and I see he's on the wave, so I know I can make it. Uh, I just got to get to this flat section and as I down pump the steep section here I come up do a little foam climb back down and then it's hard to tell but literally this wave is six inches tall <laughs> so it's really difficult um, maybe when you see other people on it you can kind of tell how small it is and now here uh, decide to go backhand the funny thing is I don't turn my head going backside I should so but I usually use my eyes to look at the the crest of the wave and down the line and not my face so it doesn't really work with the GoPro that well but I should force myself so that way at least I get better footage of that all right so here it gets a little steeper but you know if you saw that guy go over that wave it looked tiny all right so this could get kind of boring so I, I kind of want to end it with a story a while ago, my friend's daughter told me about uh, these rubber ducks that were in a cargo ship in the Pacific Ocean that had broken open and they ended up in the ocean and they were floating around. Uh, and I don't know how much of this part of the story is true. I've actually looked it up and it's called uh, Moby Duck. And there's 28,000 rubber ducks and plastic toys that ended up in the ocean and that part is completely true. Uh, another part of the story though was uh, how scientists use these ducks to figure out the the gyres and the the currents of the Pacific Ocean uh, I don't know if, how much of that portion is true, but you know, maybe it validated What they you know, what maybe possibly could have been a theory Now, the most interesting part to that story was Literally the very next day or the weekend. So that was two days after they uh, I think I heard the story 
I'm surfing in the water. I kid you not. And what happens? And what do I see? A little rubber duck. I picked it up, stuffed it down my wetsuit, and now it's with me forever. Now, I doubt it's one of the original rubber ducks uh, from Moby Duck. But um, I thought it was just so coincidental that uh, it's going to stay in my car or wherever, you know, I decide to transplant it. Uh, but it, it's my Moby Duck. Thought it was pretty funny. Anyways, till next time. I hopefully, like I said, I'll get better content out. Uh, I'm not much of a vlogger and I don't think I'm very funny. So I'll have to minimize this type of uh, posting. I'll talk to you guys later.